Hi everyone, welcome to day one, 2 1 relations and functions. So we're still in section 2 1, only this time we're going to talk about using the vertical line test to determine if a relation is a function, and we're also going to use our graphing calculator to graph some relations. So make sure you have that on hand as we continue with our notes. First, yesterday we talked about how to determine if a relation was a function based on the fact that for each x value there is only one y value that goes along with it. Well, another way we can determine if a, fun if a relation is a function is to use something called the vertical line test. So, if the vertical line test inter or sorry, if a vertical line intersects a graph in no more than one point, then the graph represents a function. So for instance, let's look at this graph on the left here and if we draw a vertical line, an imaginary vertical line, it's only going to cross our graph at one point on that vertical line. Therefore, it's a function. Each x value has only one y value in return. If a vertical line intersects a graph in two or more points, then the graph does not represent a function. So if we draw an imaginary vertical line at any point in this graph, it crosses it twice. Therefore, it is not a function. Okay. Another thing we have to talk about is the domain and range when we're given graphs like this. So instead of saying all of the x values for our domain and all of the y values for our range, we can write it a little bit different. So remember yesterday I talked about how the domain we think of in terms of can we build any walls, okay, any vertical walls. We're going to still talk about that today. And the range we said our little hint was floor and ceiling. Can we create a floor that holds the graph up? Can we create a ceiling that contains the graph below it. Okay, so let's take a look at this graph on the left. Can we create any vertical walls that contain this graph? And what we should notice is these arrows are going to indicate that the graph is going to push out further to the right and further to the left forever. So in this case, our domain, I can't create any walls that contain my graph within them, so our domain is all real numbers, and we can use that symbol to represent all real numbers. Now, a floor and a ceiling. Well, can we create a floor? You should recognize, hey, yeah, we can create a floor here when y equals negative 5. Can we create a ceiling that keeps our graph underneath, and those arrows, again, indicate it's going to push our ceiling further and further up? So we don't have a ceiling, but we do have a floor. So our range contains this floor, or compares to this floor, and we should notice that our graph is above this line, y equals negative 5. So our range is y is greater than or equal to negative 5, where that floor is located. Okay, let's try it again with this graph on the right here. Okay, starting with our domain, can we create any walls? Well, we should notice we've got a wall here at x equals 3. Can we create a wall on the left side here? And we should see that these arrows are going to indicate that our wall is going to be pushed further and further to the left all the time. Therefore, we only have one wall at x equals 3. So our domain is going to compare to that wall. All right. Looking at our graph, we should see that our graph is to the left of this wall. Therefore, it hits all of the x values that are less than or equal to 3. All right. Our range, again, a floor and a ceiling. Can we create a floor down below? And we can't because of that arrow. It's going to push the floor further and further down. Can we create this ceiling up above? And again, the answer is no. 
because we've got those arrows there, it's going to push the ceiling further and further up. So therefore, since no floor or ceiling can be built, our range is all real numbers this time. Okay, so hopefully you kind of get the idea there with the floor and ceiling concept. So let's take a look at these examples down here and see if we can uh, continue with that domain range. Okay, so here we're going to state the domain and the range and then we're going to use the vertical line test to determine if the relation is a function. Okay, so we're building off of the, uh, the function from yesterday. Okay, so let's take a look here at example three and talk about domain. Can we create any walls that contain our graph? Hopefully we see, hey, those arrows are going to push our walls further to the left and further to the right. Therefore, our domain is all reals. Our range, can we create a floor? Can we create a ceiling? Those arrows are going to push both of them further down and up. Therefore, no floor, no ceiling. Our range is all reals. Is this a function? Now we can use that vertical line test. I can draw imaginary vertical lines throughout, and we should see these vertical lines only cross our graph in one spot. So therefore, we have ourselves a function. Okay. Now example four, this kind of follows very similarly to what we did yesterday, since we just have points on this uh, graph here. So with our domain, remember yesterday we talked, it's just the x values or our input values. So we can just list the x values of our ordered pairs. So we've got negative 4, negative 3, 0, 1, and 3. And the range, remember from yesterday, the range is the output values or the y values. So we can just go ahead and list the y values. So we've got negative 2, 1. Negative 2 is a repeat, so we don't need to say that positive 2 and 3. Is this a function? Well, we can use the vertical line test, okay, and I go through each point and see my vertical line only passes through one point on each vertical line that I draw here. Another way we can look at it is remember from yesterday, each x value only has one y value, okay, therefore it is a function. All right, I want you to try these two on your own really quickly. So go ahead, state the domain range and tell whether or not it is a function. Go ahead, pause the video, try it on your own, and then we'll meet up again. Okay, hopefully you had a chance to determine domain range and whether it's a function. For number five, if you're trying to build your vertical walls, you should see these arrows are going to push those walls out forever. So therefore, no walls can be built and our domain is all reals. Our range, you should have recognized a floor could have been built at y equals zero, but no ceiling could have been built because of those arrows. So our, do or our, sorry, our range compares to those y values compared to zero and we should see the graph is above that line, so y is greater than or equal to zero is our range. Is this a function? You should have recognized that it does pass the vertical line test at any given point for x, so therefore we have ourselves a function. For example six, since we just have points, we can list the x values. Hopefully you listed one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven for our domain. And for our range, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And hopefully you recognized that it did not pass the vertical line test in multiple places. Therefore, it is not a function. Okay, so hopefully you got those right. Now let's go on to the next page. All right, for this section, we will need our graphing calculator, so make sure you have that handy. 
So let's go ahead and look at these next couple of examples. So we're going to use our calculator to sketch the given relations and then from there we'll state uh, the domain and range. Alright, so get your calculator ready. We are going to go ahead and graph y equals negative x plus 3. So step number one, I want us to go to y equals. Our y equals button is the top left button on our calculator. It should bring you to this screen right here. And one thing I want you to make sure is that no plots are highlighted. If they're highlighted, they're going to be darkened. So in order to unhighlight them, you have to scroll up and hit enter. Okay, and hopefully by doing that, it unhighlights the plot, so you don't want those highlighted. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to type in negative x plus 3 into y1, so it should look like this screen now. After you type that in, go over to the zoom button. The zoom is this middle button right here on your calculator, and it should bring you to this screen here, and I want you to choose zoom 6, that's our standard window. So our standard window goes from negative 10 for x all the way up to positive 10, so that's our domain and our range. It will bring us from negative 10 for y all the way up to positive 10. So it's just setting our domain and range for our window. After you hit zoom 6, it should bring you to this window here so you should see that alright and what you can do is hit your trace key the trace key is up here uh, next to your graph button on your calculator next to your zoom key and what should happen is you should see your cursor stuck on your line and if you hit your right and left arrows it's just moving on your line and what I want you to do is pick a couple points out to include in your graph. One of those points you should see is the point 0, 3. So we'll include that. And another point would be the point 3, 0. So we can include that as we graph. Now let's go ahead and plot some points up here on our grid. So hopefully yours is a little bit more accurate as you won't be on the iPad like I am. So we have 0, 3, and 3, 0, and now we can go ahead and draw our line, and again, yours hopefully is a bit more accurate, okay? And now we're ready to state the domain and range. So again, with our domain, can we build any vertical walls here? Hopefully you recognize no. So our domain, what is it by now? Hopefully we've got an idea. All reals. Okay, our range, can we build a floor here that contains our graph? Can we build a ceiling up above? Hopefully you recognize we cannot because those arrows indicate that it's going to push the floor down and the ceiling up. So our range, also all real numbers. Okay, now what I want you to do is use your calculator to go ahead and graph y equals x squared. Before you go ahead, you'll have to um, delete what you have in y1. So go ahead and do that. Stop the video here. Plot the graph. State your domain and range. Hopefully you had a chance to do this. And uh, what you should have gotten is a graph that's what we call a parabola, a quadratic. Looks something like that. Some important points. Hopefully you included the point zero zero. Maybe you included the point oh, one one. All right. And the point negative one one. And we should have gotten a domain of all reals and a range of y is greater than or equal to zero since we have that floor here at y equals zero. Okay, if you have any questions 
with domain and range or anything that we've covered today on this video, please make sure you bring those to class tomorrow. All right, have a nice night, guys. See you tomorrow.